But what the left has done, I think really over the last, I don't know, 10 years, but it's certainly accelerated over the last five or so years, is they've elevated trans to some kind of uh, uh, higher moral status. The, 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 they've elevated it to some kind of virtue. And they have tried, and I think to some extent succeeded, in making it sexy, in making it um, uh, popular, in making it cool, in making it something that we should all strive towards. And, and what's really interesting here, for kids in particular, is you know, trans is usually, and again, I think the stats bear this out, usually something that, that men, that, that boys and then men have an issue with and then convert to women. Sometimes it's women converting to men, but, but that's rarer historically. But over the last few years, it's become this massive number of, of girls, women who want to become men. And it's become, again, cool. It's become the thing to do. It's become popular. The cool kids do it, or, or certain, maybe the geeky kids or whatever. There's a, there's a clique in high school that is cool and, and supportive of trans. Um, and... Um, Uh, and, and so there's something, so there's something going on here with, uh, you know, the elevation of this into um, into our culture as not only normal, wherein it's not normal, it's it's fringe and it's it's unusual and it's abnormal and it's uh, to a large extent the result of some abnormality that's genetic. And it's become cool, and then the consequence of that is not only is the left pushed that it's become cool, it's pushed, and, and part of the reason it becomes cool is that girls, a lot of girls, uh, when they grow up, you know, there's many ways in which it's more fun to be a boy. Boys are given more latitude. Boys are more respected in, in many ways. We still discriminate against girls in, in certain aspects. A lot of girls want to be tomboys. A, a lot of girls it do indeed prefer to be um, to be uh, to be boys uh, they, they usually passes once they get um, hormonal and once they become women usually goes away but it it does exist and and uh, and, and what you see is girls who feel more tomboyish if you will latching on to this instead of just viewing the tomboyish as a phase viewing it as something metaphysical and therefore something that needs to be done, something needs to be done about it, hormones, for example. And what's happened is over the last 10 years is that there's been this real push among the left to um, take children who express uh, uh, feelings about what gender they are and uh, cultivate that and play to that and ultimately uh, to provide them with medical uh, solutions anywhere from hormones uh, before and during puberty uh, to uh, to surgery. Now, I think I think uh, you know doing that to kids is horrific. I I do not believe it should be done. Um, uh, you know whether the state should intervene and whether the state should ban it. You could argue it's child abuse. Um, I'm open to that argument. Uh, but whether the state should intervene is, is, I think, a different issue. I don't think doctors should do it. I don't think parents should do it. I think it's horrific. I think when, when a, a child becomes an adult, when they get to a certain age, they can make the choices for themselves. Uh, but to give children hormones uh, to go against their biology, unless there's a really, really, really good medical reason to do that, I, I think that's just horrible and horrific and, and, and abusive. But that, the left has embraced this. And celebrates it, and, and 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 has made the trans issue the number one issue, and to the to the point of of, of, of rejecting um, feminism, to the point of rejecting uh, uh, you know uh, uh, gay uh, gay and lesbians. I mean, there, there was just a uh, uh, just an episode on um, God, I forget the conservative's name, the gay conservative 
who I debated in, at Clemson University. Anyway, he, 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 you know, he did a whole thing about trans culture versus queer culture, and the idea is one of the one of the things that seems to be happening is that you know the the, the trans are, are, are rejecting the idea of of, of gayness, right? Uh, you know, uh, uh, gay assumes that you have a particular gender, and 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 a lot of this um, a lot of this trans movement is involved in this idea that there is no such thing as gender, that there is no such thing as a woman, there is no such thing, biology doesn't matter. So it, it is really interesting about what makes this so important to the left. Why is this the big thing uh, for the, Andrew Sullivan, that's right, Scott, thank you for reminding me, Andrew Sullivan. W what makes this so, such a big deal for the left? Why is the left so important? And then I wanna get to why the right freaks out about it so much. Right? And I think there are a few things when it comes to the left um, that, that uh, particularly the far left, um, that the, the whole transgender thing really resonates with them. First is the left's, um, I mean, long time uh, advocacy for the persecuted. And, and, and again, uh, uh, this, I think, can come from legitimate, positive, uh, pro-human, pro-values orientation, particularly as was reflected in the civil rights, but even in, in uh, the gay rights movement. Um, they see discrimination and, and they see oppression. They see people being discriminated against and being oppressed. And they respond to that. And they respond to that uh, by taking up the cause and and look they've done they they did a, a you know the left has uh, achieved a lot when it comes to this and they have been successful now again it's not always motivated by the right things but i think it sometimes is and particularly historically i think it has been that is uh, the civil rights movement that was a just movement in the sense that it uh, stood up against uh, Jim Crow laws and against racism and against discrimination, against discrimination by the state, against just generally the, the irrationality and the evil of racism and discrimination, was a just and right movement. And it was very successful. In some ways, it, it was too successful in the sense that it, it, it laid the seeds for uh, the, the, the destruction of its own goal of colorblindness, but it, it succeeded for a while, right? And I think the same thing is true with gays. The gays were discriminated against. Uh, they were treated horrifically. They were not granted uh, equal rights before the law. Uh, and I think that the, the movement, particularly over the last 10, uh, you know, 10 years, was oh, five, six years ago, 10 years back, 20 years back, was very successful, very successful in changing Americans' attitudes, most importantly, in changing people's attitudes towards gays. It's no big deal today. Nobody really cares that much about it, except people like Ben Shapiro and the religious nuts and, 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 and Walsh and people like that. People generally don't care about, uh, about people being gay. Uh, gay marriage uh, was approved. And, and there's a sudden, uh, uh, you know, there's a sudden real legitimate issue that uh, the left rallies around uh, in, in terms of oppressed groups. And, you know, suddenly uh, trans have been oppressed, certainly they're marginalized, and, 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 uh, and they have been. If gays were marginalized, suddenly trans have been marginalized even more. So, uh, so they rally around that. But the problem with that is that much of that is not actually motivated by positive values at least for a certain fringe element within the left. And, and I think that fringe element today is dominating the, the intellectual debate. For a large number of uh, leftists around these causes, what is really driving this is uh, some sense of, uh, you know, in a sense, a, a worship of the oppressed groups. It's, it's this, what well, we've talked about, the, this transactional uh, attitude, this uh, seeking out the most oppressed, but not just in terms of uh, uh, improving their lot, but in terms of elevating them and turning them into the, the, the very fact that they're oppressed, turning that into a virtue, turning that into the epitome 
of virtue, turning that into the epitome of, of morality. That is, that is what we should all be sacrificing to. And the motivation is not so much to help the oppressed group. The motivation, much more than that, is to drag down people who are not like the oppressed group. Not even the oppressors, just people who are not like the oppressed group. I mean, this is, I think, much about much of the agenda of the modern intersectionality movement. So you get uh, Black Lives Matter, which is, you know, there's a real issue there of are blacks being discriminated against? Is there racism? All legitimate questions. Is there police brutality against blacks? Legitimate question, right? We can look at the data and look at the facts and figure it out. But that's not what really is driving many of these people. What's driving them is to elevate this one group that is oppressed to a, mall, to a kind of mall status where everybody must sacrifice to that group not for the sake of improving that group's lot, because they don't really care about that, but in the sacrifice that everybody else has to commit. So the, the whole point about BLM and white guilt and all that, white fragility and all that, was not to help blacks, people that happen to have black skin. The whole point of that movement was to inflict guilt on people who don't have white skin. The point of that movement was to knock down the people who have so-called privileged. The whole point of that was to hurt the non-oppressed group, to knock them down, to put them in their place. And that, I think, is, um, is true of every single group that they, in, in modern times, in the last, I'd say, 10, 15 years, any group that the, that the left rallies around it's not anymore enough to try to elevate that group, to try to improve their lot. The main energy is in knocking down everybody else, is in using the oppressed group to create guilt and sacrifice and, and, and uh, uh, you know, contrition among the, the, the non-oppressed group. And that's, the whole, I think, the whole point at the end of intersectionality and, and it, it clearly was part of the agenda of, of BLM and the white fragility and all that. It's to knock everybody else down. And it's all driven by a kind of a, 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 a egalitarian um, ideology that, you know, realizes you can't raise people up. So the only way to reach this imagined, utopian, impossible equality is by knocking everybody down. And not knocking everybody out economically. It's not about economics. It's, it's about culture. It's about uh, who, who you are, your soul. And this is why there's a sudden eagerness among these people to get kids who are not trans to be trans, to knock them off their privilege, to, to make them be part of this suffering group, to make them part of the oppressed group to make them feel what it's like, and even if they don't go through the whole conversion therapy, to, to, to inflict the guilt on them that they're not that. There's something special about being trans. There's something really good about being trans, and they can't be that. They should feel bad about it, particularly given that this other group is oppressed. And by the way, that oppression is what makes them good and moral and interesting and, 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 and virtuous and worthy of our affection, worthy of our interest. Huh. So the left is driven by, I, I, I think the, the better left is driven by, we need to help the oppressed. We, we, we really want equal rights. We, we want equality, we, you know, the, the, what drove them. To, to get equality for gays or what drove them to try to get equality for blacks. But then there's a much more insidious, uh, uh, extreme, far-left group that is all about, all about 
knocking anybody who's, quote, normal down. Being normal is a privilege, which you should feel ashamed of and you should feel guilty of. And that's what they live for. That's what drives them. It's that nihilism. So I think that's one, obviously, driving force uh, for the left. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and, of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.